Hey guys, welcome to my channel. I'm so excited because I'm starting a new segment on my channel and it is going to be called Black History Thursdays. So these are gonna be every Thursday. I'm going to try my hardest to post a new story about black history, something that I didn't know about somebody that you guys may not have known and I'm going to try to give you as much information as possible about the person or the event. So I'm really, 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 really looking forward to this and I hope you guys enjoy. Um, don't forget to give this a big thumbs up and don't forget to like and subscribe and share with all your friends. So let's go ahead and get straight into the video. Okay guys, so starting off, um, we're going to talk about Susie King Taylor. This is unknown black history that I didn't even know about. So yeah, so Susie King Taylor, she was a teacher and she was a nurse. She was born into slavery and the first seven years of her life, she, um, she lived on a plantation. Can you imagine? even growing up in slavery, I definitely don't think that I could survive that, but yeah, she did. She was born in Georgia, um, Savannah, Georgia, and she lived on the plantation for the first seven years of her life. So after those seven years, she was allowed to go live free with her grandmother, who was also in Savannah, Georgia at that time. While she was there, Susie uh, was secretly taught education, so she learned how to read and write, all that good stuff, by two black women, and she was tutored by two young white youth. So back then, you know, guys, of course, that was super illegal and super dangerous for everybody involved in that, so she was tutored. In April 1862, Susie was able to um, escape with her uncle and several other slaves towards, um, I think it's Pulaski, I don't know if I'm put it here, but um, they left the federal, federal, federal gunboat and they fled from there, so they were able to escape. So after Susie escaped with her uncle, she went to live in Union um, Street. And it was a little island off of the coast of Georgia. It was called Seven Islands. It's called Seven Islands. And she wanted to live there um, with a whole bunch of other refugee slaves. Um, and at that time, Susie was only 14 years old. So imagine going through all of that at the age of 14. The same year, while Susie was 14 years old, she married Edward King. Um, he was a black officer in the United States Colored Infantry. United States, he was a black officer in the United States Colored Infantry. Um, and yeah, during that time, Susie actually became a nurse and a laundress up underneath him and underneath his sanction, or I think that's what it's called. Now, guys, nice quick update on what I've done so far. Um, I took out my braids. I did the apple cider vinegar rinse with the um, Aztec clay mask. Um, I did my deep condition in the shower and then I washed everything out. So that's where we are at now. Back to the story. So while she was working underneath her husband, Susie also began to train the officers that were there um, and would begin to teach them how to read and how to write. Along with that, the officers were teaching her how to shoot and how to defend herself. So um, in a statement that she wrote, I'm gonna read it out because I have it on my computer right here. According to her memoirs, it says, that she learned to handle a musket very well and could shoot straight and often hit the target. So after that, Susie began working as a nurse for a hospital for four years and she actually did three years in the union without pay. But you guys of course know that's how black Americans were treated back in the day, so. So after that, her and her husband remained there until the end of the war. And then they moved. So Susie and Edward moved to Savannah, where Susie then opened up a school for African-American children. Sadly, soon after that, Susie's husband, Edward, died um, before their first child was even born. So Susie got pregnant and her husband died a couple months before her first child was even born. So during this time, right after her husband, um, passed away, Susie obviously lost income coming in for her family. So she began to um, 
continue to work as a teacher, but things began to get rough and uh, she started losing students along the way because of the new open public schools. So a lot of the students were leaving from her and they were going to the public schools that were beginning to be open. Okay guys, because Susie lost so many students, she was forced to um, quit teaching as a teacher and she became, uh, I think, a maid or a house servant for a very wealthy family. Now this family that she moved in with lived in Boston and there in Boston is actually when she met her second husband and his name was Russell Terry. There after Boston, Susie became a member of the Women's Relief Corps. Then she actually became president of that corps in 1893. After that, around that time, she also began writing a book about her experiences and her whole entire life story. And it was called about reminiscences of my life in camp with the 33rd United States Colored Troop. So because of that, Susie became a published author. When the book came out, Susie became a published author in 1902. So not only that, but she also became the first African-American woman to write about her, her life in the Civil War. 10 years later, after Susie published her um, memoirs, she actually unfortunately passed away. But before then, she wrote a quote from her memoirs and I would like to read it to you guys. So I'm gonna read it from the side of my screen here. And it says, what a wonderful revolution. In 1861, the Southern papers, the Southern papers were full of advertisements for slaves. But now despite all the hindrances and the race problems, my people are striving to attain the full standard of all other races born free in the sight of God. And then the, and in a number of instances have succeeded. Just as we ask to be citizens of these United States, where so many of our people have shed their blood with their white comrades, that the stars and stripes should never be polluted. Okay guys, so basically that's it. My hair's dry now. I have to go to class in between the video. But yeah, so that's it. I really hope you enjoyed. Um, don't forget to like and subscribe and I'll see you guys next week. Bye.